So there is another side to this conversation. How do doctors know who needs prescriptions and how do they know how much is needed and for how long? Dr. Sue Varma is a board certified psychiatrist and a distinguished fellow at the American Psychiatric Association. And Brooke Seem is a 36 year old who was put on psychiatric drugs beginning at the age of 15 after the death of her father. She wrote about her 15 years on antidepressants and the turmoil of withdrawal in her memoir may cause side effects. Well, Brooke, watching that, I, I, I feel like I'm watching a woman like really stand up and say, hear me on this. Did you, did you feel unheard on it for some time? I, you know, it wasn't even that I felt unheard. It was that I had been told, again, like I said, through actions, that I needed outside help and that that implied that I was not enough. I didn't have the power within myself to get through the death of my father. And then every single hard experience moving forward. And so it didn't occur to me until I was 30. I mean, I spent my entire 20s and most of my teens on these drugs and it took, it took a suicide scare and also just, I think, some emotional maturity to realize that something wasn't right. So, so was there a, was there a, a moment, a, a flash yeah. moment when you kind of saw this for yourself? Yeah, I mean, my, my father died when I was 15 and I was, had just turned 30 and I kind of realized that I had, was about to spend more time, a longer portion of my life without him than I had with him. And at the same time, I also realized that means I've spent more than half my life on powerful psychiatric drugs, which wasn't a choice that I ever made. The adults in my life made that for me and I was contemplating suicide. So I started to put those, you know, those two things together and it made me realize I should not be this depressed if my antidepressants are working. So the only choice I had, I felt like at that point, was either go down a suicide path or get off these drugs and figure out what my baseline was. And it wasn't until I started to get off of them that I realized the story I had been told about putting, you know, how easy it was to get on them. It wasn't going to be like that trying to get off them. Brooke, talk about withdrawal once you decided to stop. What was that like? I mean, I, I had never even heard of antidepressant withdrawal until I started going through it. I had seen a psychiatrist, you know, as, as we're told to do, and quite frankly, she didn't have any education on the matter at all and gave me really bad advice. And so, you know, we're also looking at a, a culture and a situation where you can't easily step down on the amount of drugs. So, for example, if you're on 100... What do you mean by that? Why can't you? Because the pharmaceutical companies don't offer smaller dosages. So I had to completely stop cold turkey, which plunged me into immediate and very severe antidepressant withdrawal that lasted for almost a year. And that included severe physical symptoms, um, you know, like all of my senses kind of lit up on fire. I had trouble wearing clothes. I had horrific, violent, intrusive thoughts. Your skin just didn't want clothes touching I, it, them? It was like too, it was just so sensitive that yeah. everything felt like needles on my skin. And then there's the psychological side effects of in severe intrusive thoughts about hurting myself and others. There was rage so severe that I bent a metal ironing board in half. Like I am a small person and I was able to do that. But it was a reaction to having this drug pulled away too fast. But I was seeing a doctor who didn't know that. And she, from her perspective, she had no option. Now, we have research now. This, when I went through this, it was in 2016. We started to have a little bit of research on this in 2019 and now through the pandemic and into 2021-22, we're starting to actually get an idea of how many people are affected with antidepressant withdrawal and we're starting to understand that we cannot move medications around, we cannot pull people off them, or at least we should not be, but we are. And so there are so many people suffering from this who end up getting diagnosed with other ailments, other mm -hmm. illnesses that they don't have, they get thrown on other medication, they're thrown in psych hospitals, like they, go, they get sent to the ER. It's, it's a complete tragedy and one that is probably avoidable with a yep. little bit more education and a little bit of help. Well, you're out there doing that. But Dr. 